Get up, get up, get up. Present yourself front and center. Was I dreaming? Was a drill sergeant in my room? I wiped the sleep from my eyes and saw the blaring red glare of an alarm clock read 4.35 a.m. As the bellowing continued, it all became clear. That voice was my father's. If I didn't want more trouble, I had better hustle double time downstairs and face my fate. I knew this moment was bound to happen. I had gotten drunk the night before, and while it wasn't my first experience drinking, it was the first time I'd been caught. I knew life as I had known it was over. I was terrified, but had been trained to run toward the yelling. Even in the dead of night, with a brain half asleep, my body knew what to do. When a parent calls, you drop everything, and instantly reply, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, and then coming. It may have been 1986, but inside my home, my parents were waging a war to retain a perfect 1950s cooled and controlled household. 20 years in the military had trained my dad to expect absolute obedience from a subordinate, even if that was his 16-year-old daughter. 20 years as a military wife had taught my mom that keeping up appearances was of utmost importance. My rowdy and drunken behavior the night before was now a chip in the veneer of our perfect family home. It had started out innocently enough. After school, I'd had a cross-country meet. Katrina was my new cross-country friend by virtue of us being the two worst runners on the team. <laughs> I had joined the team hoping to lose some weight and maybe meet a boy. <laughs> Katrina was supermodel thin, smoked clothes, cigarettes, and only joined the team to keep her mom off my ass about college. <laughs> Our mutual goal each meet was simple. Don't come in last. Let there be at least one person worse than us. <laughs> After the meet, I went to Katrina's to clean up and primp for a back-to-school dance. Katrina's mom took us to the dance, and then it gets fuzzy. Bartles and James, fuzzy naval wine cooler fuzzy. <laughs> I think the dance was awesome. What a surprise. <laughs> Being drunk actually makes a high school dance fun. <laughs> Normally, I would have stood on the side or danced with a group of girls. Not this time. I was in the middle of the floor, in the middle of a bunch of senior boys and dancing like a maniac. I was also sporting a new makeover Katrina had drunkenly given me that included lots of teal eyeliner, and fresh paint painted on my teased blonde hair. Soon, my Bartles and James infused confidence simply, simply took over. Then the night quickly morphs into Polaroid-like flashes of memory. Drinking vodka out of a baby's bottle in the girls' bathroom. <laughs> Riding in a sports car, I'm sitting on the lap of some random boy. Katrina is sitting on the back seat floor by my feet. We openly pass bottles back and forth to the driver. Walking through my first high school house party, I have arrived. I am the shit. <laughs> More alcohol? Why, yes, please. Let this night never end talking to random people about my deep love of Rob Lowe. <laughs> Accosting a girl who sort of reminded me of Rob Lowe's girlfriend. She was just a girl in my algebra class. She had big boobs, so did I. We hugged and laughed and became instant best friends. <laughs> then blackness. I had become completely out of control, gotten sick, had an asthma attack. I so scared my new Rob Lowe friend that she called her older sister who simply said, call her parents. <laughs> my new friend didn't yet know what my older friends knew. Never ever call the Joneses. <laughs> my mother had picked me up in the Carl's Jr. parking lot the night before, surprised to see my new look included pink acrylic paint highlights in my hair and puke stains on my blue and white striped espadrilles. <laughs> As we drove home, she asked a few questions, and after finding out that I was simply a sloppy drunk and not in immediate danger, said nothing more. 
When I awoke in the morning, I expected the yelling to start, but my parents said nothing all day. Radio silence. My hangover and I had stayed in my room in a preemptive grounding. (laughs) The silence was more terrifying than being yelled at. As the hours slowly crept by, I grew more anxious and paranoid. Once my brother had been punished by having to run laps and do a bunch of push-ups by being yelled at, and even though I hadn't been spanked or hit in years, the threat of physical harm seemed very real as I silently sat in my room. But now, in the middle of the night, as I grabbed my Barbie pink terry cloth robe and ran toward the yelling, I felt the guillotine about to drop. Do you know why we woke you up? My dad had asked with crossed arms and a dangerous, angry glare in his eyes that I had never seen. And I had been privy to his anger plenty of times over the littlest of things, rolling my eyes, leaving my dresser drawers opened, and reading in the car when I should have been enjoying the ride to the airport. (laughs) But (laughs) there was a heat to this anger with desert-like waves hitting me full force across our tastefully decorated living room. No, I replied. No what? No, sir. I didn't hear you. No, sir. This is the exact hour we awakened last night by a stranger. A stranger telling us our daughter was knocked down drunk and needed to be picked up. (laughs) I'm so sorry. Oh, we're way, way past being able to say sorry. (laughs) I made a move to sit down on our powder blue velvet sofa. I didn't give you permission to sit down. Sorry. If you say sorry one more time, I'll give you something to be sorry about. Yes, sir. So I stood at a sort of resigned attention for the next two hours as I was grilled on how such a horrendous turn of events could have happened. I lied as best I could to protect the innocent, my new friend, but the damage was done. She was labeled a bad influence and was grounded in my mother's eyes for almost 20 years. (laughs) There was talk of a transfer to a girl's Catholic school never getting my driver's license, and a summer spent grounded pulling weeds from the hill behind her house. As my interrogation winded down, I was allowed into the kitchen to grab some water. My mother followed me, and when I turned to face her, she slapped me. It had been years since I had been hit. Both of us looked at each other in shock. I knew she regretted it the minute she hit me, but that didn't stop my tears from burning down the hot red streak on my face. My mom and dad were frightened. I had lied. To my parents, this was a greater sin than the drinking. A military man relied on his troops to tell the troop, the truth. I may have been unenlisted, but honor, duty, and living by your word still applied to the daughter of a Bronze Star Navy veteran. Not only had I lied, I had lied well by fabricating a complex webs of half-truth and alibis among my friends. I wasn't the girl they thought I was. I was a liar. This may have been typical 80s teen rebelliousness, but in a Vietnam veteran's home, a rebellion must be crushed and quickly stamped out. <laughs> it was a slippery slope for my father. One lie could grow to many and fester until his precious daughter was barefoot and pregnant selling grilled cheese sandwiches out of a VW van in the parking lot of a Grateful Dead concert. (laughs) (sighs) On Monday, I was forced to walk to school alone. No carpool with my best friends, a shaming punishment for any socially conscious high schooler. Except I wasn't exactly alone. My dad followed me the mile back and forth to school, scowling in his gold Cadillac, on watch for any boys or booze. Pediatricians and principals were called. My grandparents in Hawaii were informed of the family tragedy. (laughs) Nani and pal. Uh, It was decided that a family therapist was needed to find out why a 16-year-old would lie to her parents in order to go to a party, drink, and flirt with boys. (laughs) On Wednesday, 
we saw the therapist after a tension-filled silent ride to her office. After our hour session, she had my parents' number. They wanted answers, and answers now, on why I had lied. This is normal teenage behavior. Your expectations are almost unobtainable. Tracy has excellent grades, is involved in sports, theater, after school clubs, church. I think she's under a lot of pressure to live up to your standards. I would like to continue meeting just with Tracy, one-on-one, -on -one, to help guide her through this time and help her make safer decisions. The therapist was never mentioned again. <laughs> I was grounded for two weeks, a sentence one week shorter than many of my co-conspirators' punishment. My parents often mentioned, that time you lied. <laughs> and I felt shame for letting them down. Why? Because life continued on as it had, except I became a much better liar. <laughs> that one-time lie became an every weekend lie. I quickly moved on from house parties to sneaking into Tijuana nightclubs with nothing more than a doctored blockbuster ID card. <laughs> My biggest fear had been getting caught and the unknown punishment that would rain down on me. I'd seen their worst and survived. If I found a little bit of freedom in sneaking a drink or smoking a joint, so be it. That slap had freed me too. My mother's instant regret, that unspoken admission that she'd gone too far was a victory. I no longer feared physical punishment, but I made damn sure I was never caught again. Yeah. Yeah. Vamp first timer Tracy Jones, give it up.